Hey everybody, Johnny B. Good here, located today in Wadsworth, Illinois. I am about a mile and a half, two miles south of uh, Wisconsin state line. I'm uh, traveling on Interstate 94, uh, north down, but it, and but it actually says west on it because 94 runs east and west. But it just so happens that this portion of the road runs north and south. Then up to Milwaukee, then it'll run west again. But anyway, today is Monday, September 9, 10.25 uh, a.m. My appointment, my delivery appointment is not till 24 hours from now. I am only 73 miles away from there and today I only have 5 hours and 23 minutes left to drive and there's not a whole lot I could do so I'm probably just gonna hang out at the uh, at the Petro in Oak Creek, Wisconsin probably do some uh, running exercise and walking and taking a shower after that there's something that I need to show you guys that made my heart sunk this morning I was driving down the road I was about two trucks behind another truck two truck length I meant to say I was following him about two truck lengths behind here, the, another truck, flatbed. And I heard this big tonk on my windshield. And I knew exactly what it was. Here, I'll show you. This is one bad part about one piece. That's one negative aspect of having a one-piece uh, windshield is once you get a crack like that you'll need to change the whole thing supposed to some of the trucks that has a division and it's actually two separate glass now I am on my way to the yard tomorrow I mentioned this yesterday I am on my way to the yard tomorrow to do a truck service for the first time on this truck. Right now I'm at 29,960. So tomorrow would exactly be about 30,000 miles on this truck. But here's what I'm hoping for. Tomorrow I'm hoping that they can probably still salvage that. And uh, they they will probably call one of those safe light uh, guys and you know do their little magic touch up on that if it doesn't spread out if it doesn't spread out too too much too long or too big by the time I get to the yard tomorrow they might still be able to salvage that I don't know but I tell you what, that was, uh, that wasn't that big, uh, about an hour ago. It's actually growing by the minute. So, don't know if they're going to be able to save it. And I have no idea how much this whole windshield cost. Probably quite a bit. And here comes Wisconsin. Looks like the uh, mega scale over here. We call them mega scales here. Wisconsin is open. But remember, I weighed my truck the other day. I'm all nice and legal, so 
shouldn't have any problem but that's not a guarantee not a guarantee that they will not pull you in the back also the thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about today is something in a little bit of a serious note it seems that I am not the only one that having this frustration trucker Josh has touched on this subject uh, the subject of merging Now let's let's first deal with the facts. Okay, the facts are four wheelers don't know how to merge, and they're not about to change their driving habit in in the near future. I just don't see them changing that or getting better. In fact, I think of the opposite. The way, see, the way I look at it is the world gets worse year after year after year. It doesn't get better. When it comes to people's attitude, people's, uh, I don't know, it just seems like the world gets, if you were to call it a, you know, quality control, it, it goes down whether the quality control of politicians and law enforcement or whatever everybody seems to be declining but here's to the point when it comes to merging the facts are the four-wheelers don't know how to, how to merge they don't care they don't know and the fact is, another fact is I only drive 60 miles an hour. Now I have tried this over the years. I've actually, on a two lane highway, I've actually driven slower than the average, you know, slower than the traffic speed limit. Just to give those four-wheeler a chance to merge in there properly that doesn't work one of the things that work is if you have a three-lane highway if I was to drive in the middle lane that works but the problem with that is then you start holding up the traffic behind you and a lot of people get frustrated they start giving you the international sign that you're number one and uh, another thing that I tried is on a two-lane highway I would give this guys plenty of time plenty of room to merge in there I tell you what some of these guys are four-wheelers are so scared to merge I've actually had to almost stop in the freeway try to let them in there and by doing so I'm endangering the life of many many motorists behind me I mean that's one thing that I will I won't you know I can't understand is there's there's a point when it go uh, there's a point where uh, courtesy becomes an endangerment to the lives of many many people and uh, it just I don't know it, no matter you know I haven't tried running. 70 miles an hour on the highway maybe that would that would work but they not all of us can run 70 miles an hour and I seriously doubt that the speed of our traveling in the highway will give those four-wheelers a better chance to merge either you know so 
and and also is that uh, oh I lost it uh, by the way this is Wisconsin now so I guess you know I guess that uh, oh here's the thing that I was thinking talking about uh, trying to say is you trade one person's safety for the other guy or the other guy and you know whose safety are you going to give up sometimes you're in a situation where you want to give this guy's this guy a courtesy and make him give him all the safety that you could possibly give him but by doing so you're you're endangering the life of somebody else so what you know one of the things that I was going to say also is the fact that the four-wheelers don't know how to merge they're not about to change anytime soon and we cannot control their actions uh, you know we have no control of their actions but but we do we each of us have I'm talking just I'm talking to everybody I'm not talking about just truck drivers I'm talking to everybody and, and this spreads out in all aspects of life we can't control other people's action and attitude but we do have control of ours now to apply that into the merging part how should we control our action what would be the best action that we can take that would be you know a happy medium where everybody can live with and as harsh as this may sound I think that uh, I think that I'm going to side to the to the people who are in the right if you don't know how to merge properly in the highway then then you get into an accident or I, I'm having to choose between you and the guy right beside me I'm gonna take you out and I know that sounds horrible but suppose you're there merging the speed limit the speed limit is 70 and you're merging at 45 and there's a four-wheeler or a vehicle right next to me so what am I gonna do move over push him over and then just to let you guys so you can let you know you can get in I think not I mean that's that's just the harsh reality of things right sometimes I think that my sense of courtesy is gets me gets my better judgment I guess <coughs> so yeah it's you know it's been a while since uh, I've done any studies as far as getting my driver's license when I you know when, when I was trying to get my four-wheelers license now remember I didn't have a driver's license until I was 23 years old because I migrated from the Philippines to the United States sure I had a driver's license in the Philippines but I never took any driving course or a driving test or nothing it just I handed in the money and somebody handed in my driver's license that was it but the point I'm trying to say is 
here in the United States, there's a lot of program, a lot of education about a lot of aspects of life. But I don't ever remember anybody educating the four-wheelers how to properly merge. And what to do and what not to do are on semi. I guess trucker just calls semi a semi. I don't know why that is. Uh, sure, I've seen those billboards and truck signs that says, you know, uh, blind side, no zone, go zone, and all that stuff, and give space. But there's really not a program out there that the four wheelers can really study on. Now, if you remember one of my videos titled Jackie and Michelle, I was trying to teach them how to drive, you know, for the first time they got their temps. I was trying to drive them into, I uh, teach them how to drive in a truck driver's uh, perspective and, and I I tried really hard to grill that on their head. I hope they will get it, but anyway, give me your thoughts and uh, suggestions about the merging part and how do you guys do it? All right, we'll catch you later, Johnny. Be good here. Peace.